Hello friends, my name is Dave Miller. My name is Miles Payne. We're your fuck buddies. Welcome you, in. You went sexy, I'm I'm going hangover. Yeah. Because it was my birthday yesterday. Happy birthday, Dave. Thanks, buddy. My vocal cords froze off because I just cycled here in minus 20. Sucker. Guess how many kinds of shit that was. You're revealing our time paradox again. Because if it's not minus 20 on Sunday... Well, after unlocking the secrets of Capoeira, we can record any time, any place, any when, and anywhere. It's true. And I am preemptively hungover on a Wednesday. Oh, I was wondering. I was like, why the fuck are you hungover? You were fine a second ago. I pulled back the curtain. Oh, Jesus. Sorry. Well, hey. Uh, hey. Welcome welcome in to... Clink. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> Even not being hungover, <laughs> that's unpleasant. So how are you doing, Dane? I'm good. I was talking to all the Danes listening. Oh. I was talking to the people from Denmark. <laughs> <laughs> our, our massive Denmark audience. Um, no, how are you doing? Dane Miller. I'm good. Yeah, oh, awesome. Um, yeah, how are you doing? I'm okay. Thanks for having me over. Always. So yeah, welcome back, guys. Uh, hope everyone's having a good week. For them, it'll be the start of the week. Yeah, well, have a good week since we fucking talked to you last, you know. That's true. I don't... <laughs> the week prior does not cease to exist just because it's Monday. Exactly, yeah. Or does it? Or does it? Also, when we restarted the time, I changed it, so it will have been the end of the week. Monday's new Friday. You heard it here first. We did it. Woo-hoo! But now we're going to have to change, like, and put our podcast three days later. So yeah. it's back on Monday, so we're now going to be releasing... On Thursday. Don't say that. We're not. It's Monday still. We're always worry. doing Monday forever. Till the end of time. But now we're doing bi-weekly. No. <laughs> we're not. This. We're not. It's I'm this. sorry. This uh, is our episode where we lie to you. Every All of our... Everything we say is a lie. Well, actually, no. One of us tells the truth. The other one tells a lie. Oh, shit. Is the liar Dan? Yes. Yeah. Great. All right. Yeah. Let's... Uh, let's get right into some goddamn questions. Cool. Do you want to go first? Will I go first? Mm, yeah, you go first. Sure. Um, okay, so basically, a friend of the show, who's not going to be named, they're going to be Agent Caldwell, um, they sent in a question where, effectively, they'd been on a date, a Tinder date, went pretty well, um, but right after that, he started calling her cutie, so, like, text her in the morning, like, hey, cutie, everything she says, hey, cutie, and she doesn't like it, and she's basically wondering, like, one, how to get rid of that and two whether it's like should she be as bothered by it as she is because i guess it seems a little like a mixture of like corny familiar and like ownershipy. i have one very very important question as before i can answer this mm-hmm. is it cutie or is it a q and a t it's cutie spelled out as far as i'm aware i never thought to clarify because i'm an idiot i'm sorry well now we know that niall's the one telling the truth Wow. Wow. Or was I just mimicking you? Or am I the one telling the lie? Because you're not an idiot. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Let's just call it. Uh, it's been the shortest <laughs> episode, guys. Thank you. I'd like we're back at the cheap whiskey. <laughs> Josh Paper and the Harvest Stars. I think it's very fair to just say, hey, I'm not a big fan of that. I hate being called kid. Like, what the fuck calls you kid? I had a girl that used to be like, thanks, kid. And oh, like I think it was no. I think it was not a specific to me. I think it was just sort of like that was That's a fucking weird thing to call people. Yeah. Especially like, when you're fucking them. Yeah. No, um, no. But like even outside of like romantic situations, like I hated always being called kid or Who kiddo. Who says it even like in real life? Like kiddo and stuff like that. I've like, never been called kiddo. It's like something a badly written old character says on yeah. TV shows. I mean like Shit. whippersnapper. Have you ever fucking heard that in real life? No. Yeah, it's the same. We're not like eighteen hundred prospectors. After Capoeira last week. Oh, fuck. Who knows? Yeah, I don't know. Like, and the thing is, I guess she she seemed actually pretty like not irate, but like a little like upset about it, as opposed to just like bothered. Um, I don't like. I think she thinks it's like a move, 
or it's like a thing that he's doing or like it's almost like a dominant position or like well i feel like he just probably wanted to say something complimentary yeah. and because she didn't immediately say oh no he thinks it's now like a cute thing or like yep. a good thing like i i don't think he's doing it negatively i really can't believe that he is like of all the things to call someone to sort of like assert dominance over i feel like cutie probably isn't one of them i mean like if it was said you know condescendingly like if it's fucking you know hey cutie i got this yeah yeah it's like yeah, sweetie you know what i mean like mm-hmm. it could be used that way but like i can't imagine someone who's had a good time with you then being like i'm gonna talk down to this bitch <laughs> yeah know, you, you know, hope I, not but I, I mean yeah mm-hmm. i think it i think the best way to test the water is saying hey i'm not a big fan of that yeah and then if he and that's keeps exactly doing how you phrase it, it um yeah i don't think there's any problem just saying like I'm, I'm, I don't really like being called cutie. Yeah. You know I'm, what I mean? I've called people pet names and they've been like, mm, not really into that. I'm like, oh, okay. Hmm. And there's like, I, again, I don't know why your friend doesn't like this, but like, I've had people be like, oh, like my dad is an asshole and he used to call me that. So like kind of brings Ugh. up bad, you know what I mean? And yeah, so, yeah. so I'm like, oh yeah, for sure. In That's that case, fair, yeah. I, I will happily use something else. Some people just don't like pet names at all. That's fair. I don't know. I feel like I don't really like to give them necessarily. I always feel really weird. I do. I I do it all the time. Really? Yeah. I don't know. I feel like, you know, I'll send like a jokingly like, or like a winky kinky, like winky kinky. What the Ooh. fuck am I talking about? Uh, just, you know, like, Hey sexy or like, Hey, you know, beautiful or whatever. Like not even like regularly, but maybe just like, one random like morning, you know, where it's like, you know, if we had the one date, maybe the next time I'll say it like once, but just in a like, if it fits the tone of what we're doing and yeah. also just in a, I think you're super hot kind of way and then stop and not like every yeah. text. I'm like, Hey sexy, how's your day going? Hey sexy. Was that cream cheese on the bagel? Hey sexy. Where'd you get that bagel? Hey sexy. Any other bagel recommendations? Fuck. I really want a bagel right now. Yeah. Man, the best bagels right are they though? Yeah, I think so. Better than Montreal? Yeah. Real Montreal bagel. Well, this is our bagel podcast. <laughs> Welcome to Bagel Buddies. <laughs> Where we turn your cream oh. cheesy situations into your cheesy cream situations. I didn't say it. You didn't say it, but either did you technically last week. What? Didn't I? Um, was that saying it? Could uh, it be could, yeah. is saying the word? Okay. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm gonna sorry. I'm gonna I love you. Throw it in there. We are cream a, cheesy. God damn it. <laughs> We're a dating and sex advice podcast where we take your sticky, sexy situations and turn them into sexy, sticky situations. Oh, <laughs> fuck. I think you went like you intentionally were pretending you were going to fuck up and then you fucked up. No, I was waiting for you to say cheese. I, I was, gonna I was actually going to. Stupid. No, I felt bad. Whatever. Well, we, we, we sexy questions. <laughs> That's going to be our new tagline. We're not allowed to drink this whiskey anymore. <laughs> we are your fuck buddies and uh, we sexy questions. I, I say, yeah, just like, hey, a heads yeah. up. I, I I know what it is. Or if you want to explain it, you can. You don't have to. Just be like, I don't really like the term cutie. Yeah. And I'm sure they're going to be like, okay, cool. Now, the danger is if he's a pet namer, he's going to be going for something else. Mm-hmm. So do you then suggest? You're like, I'd just like to be called Agent Caldwell. Or yeah, I mean, or do you I, just let him try and shoot them down until he's reaching? I mean, it could be a fun little Head game. Buttercup. You know what I mean? Like, be like, if you come up with a pet name that I like, I'll, you know. Suck your ear. Yeah. Go to town on that ear. Mm, get that robes <laughs> up in my I just want to. Throat. So, there was a question that I was reading, um, and it wasn't a very good question. I don't remember what it was now. Oh, it was something like, I want to go for dinner after the movie that I'm going on this date with. Uh, How clearly do I they ask didn't her? listen to episode one. Um, and people were like, just fucking ask her. But one of the guys says. He said, why not just bring her back to your place and dick her into the mattress? Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, fuck. Dan? Yeah. Dan? Dan, is that you? So, yeah, maybe maybe say, like, if you can come up with a pet name that I like, I'll let you dick me into this mattress. Or, <laughs> or start calling him progressively worse pet names until he gets the message. Mm-hmm. Call him kid. Call him sweet child. Yeah, and then proceed to sing "Sweet Child" all of that song, and that's his whole pet name, "Sweet Child of Mine." Yeah, yeah, from beginning to end, even with the do 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 do. Yeah, make that his pet name. Just the guitar riff from "Sweet Child." Oh, hey, do 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 do. Dick me into this mattress. It'll make it'll make Dirty Talk real weird. Oh man, your neighbors are gonna fucking hate you. Yeah. 
Unless they love Guns N' Roses. Well, who doesn't? I'm not a big fan. Oh, God. The fuck out of here. But yeah, so just, I guess, talk, suggest them, punish him, dick in the mattress. Continue. Yeah, just... Yeah, whatever whatever gets you dicked into that mattress. We sex <laughs> questions. Um, this one is... It comes anonymously Ooh. from a friend of the show. So that means you got to give him a, an agent code name. I think um, it's your turn. Do you, Okay. Um, I'm going to go with Agent... Um, agent, mm, it is. <laughs> agent... Fuck. See, this is why you're supposed agent, to... Agent, mm, fuck. <laughs> agent Hanson. Ooh. Like mm bop. Oh. Mm fuck. <laughs> Burp my toes now. Mm, no breakfast. Fuck. Mm, 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 mm fuck. fuck. No breakfast for me. Burn <laughs> toast. Because he burns his toast. So I sing mm fuck. What else would you say? Oh fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> Who let us get a microphone? I know. Um okay, so Agent Mm fuck says no, it was Agent Hansen. Damn it. Um <laughs> <laughs> uh, asks in an earlier episode. Dane mentioned that he solved Tinder. What did he mean by that? <laughs> they get a fair amount of matches, but can't seem to be making anything out of them. Uh, they usually fizzle before a date is even mentioned, or they ghost me prior to meeting up. I know this isn't a lot of fun because it, it's asking for my Tinder advice, but I feel like you can jump in on this. Yeah. Well, it's kind of funny because we already did do the how to talk to people on Tinder question, which I believe is when you said you solved Tinder. So do we just reiterate? Well, I think... For, it was like, how do you get mad? I think was, you know what I mean? Because we just talked about my hook, really. Yeah. Although, funnily enough, the question was, how do I talk to people on a dating app? But yes, that's how do I get to talk to them? And this yeah. is more like, how do I talk? Okay. Well, um, first things first, what you meant was you were being slightly hyperbolic and saying, you didn't solve it. It's still, it's it's like 99% complete. No, I solved it. You solved it. Mm-hmm. Oh, shit. But then how does it still exist? I forgot to carry the one. Oh, sh- now, nah. well, fuck. Yeah. Oh, God. You'll know this Tinder just disappeared. <laughs> what are you going to do when you poop now? World. Yeah. Take a dick pic. Um, the, okay, so here's here's my here's my Tinder solutions. One, cast the widest net. Don't spend a whole lot of time. Like, the second you start investing your time into, especially if it's like, if there's one person, you're like, fuck, I want this person to match with me. It's going to go downhill because you're going to get weird about it. So just like, yeah, when you're taking a shit, Get on Tinder and get swiping. Uh, when you're on the butt, you know what I mean. Like when you're when you're doing not doing anything important, get swiping, and yeah. just and like don't take a whole lot of time. Just gut feeling if you if you're into. It. And then like if you match with someone, you're like, oh, this isn't really my thing. Mm-hmm. Unmatch. Well, that's the thing. I guess it's one of those things where you can always err on the side of caution. If there's someone you're like, well, I'm not sure, fucking swipe them. Yeah, it's not gonna kill you. Yeah, and then it's like if you if you on a second glance on a deeper look, you're like not into it, then whatever yeah fuck then, it. oh there's a button for that yeah the next thing is like don't talk forever yeah don't leave it too long and i feel like i was almost the opposite of this i i fucking hated the bullshit like oh, we're just gonna message forever so i would probably too quickly be like let's just fucking meet up like if you want to no but you know? i think that's that is like i mean it might take a while for you to like sort of finesse and find out how, well, you gotta find how to find rhythm. your rhythm and also it. everyone has a different rhythm yeah but like i would I would I would do two things. I would get off Tinder. I would ask them for their number. Um, once I realized if it was someone I would actually like mm-hmm. be interested in meeting up with, I would get their number. I, and then like within like the first couple texts that I sent them, I would be like, let's just grab drinks. You know what I mean? Like however it came up, I would just figure out a way to be like, let's go on a date. Yeah. Um, and I then I, I feel would like... not talk to them until like. It was time to like unless again unless it comes naturally and like yeah, there's a good conversation being happening it. like but if you make plans like if it's Monday and you make plans for Friday check in on Thursday night and be like hey we still good for tomorrow yeah um I, like there's no need to constantly be checking in being like hey how's your day like if you're just talking for the sake of being in their being, realm yeah of, then you're like, gonna overdo it yeah they're gonna like be like oh man this guy I've I've known this guy for like fifteen minutes and mm-hmm. he's Texting me more than my friends. And on that note, like, don't, if you are setting up a plan, like, don't put it too far in the future. You don't want to be like, oh, you want to hang out in, like, 20 days? Yeah. Because, like, that's a lot of fucking time that you have to not be a weirdo and still be interested. Like, because it's, yeah. it's building towards something. So once you set that date, that's kind of what it's been building towards. So in between, like, you've already gotten there, really. The yeah. only thing you can do is fuck it up. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Um, and then once you... 
and if, and again, if, if people are going to ghost on you, it's Tinder, especially is mm-hmm. a numbers game. Like well, fuck it, move you're, on. You're going to get ghosted on, yeah, for sure. Um, hopefully, you're not stood up because that's the like that shit. That's the shittiest thing to do to someone. Um, it's not the shit. I mean, no, it's that. Um, but like, if that's the case, just fucking saddle up at the bar and have a drink yourself and enjoy your me time. If like, you know what I mean? Like, um, but that's fair. Yeah. But, see if your friends are around. Maybe turn into a lads night, and then who knows who you'll meet. Yeah. Um, so th- those are like my my quick sort of like Cole's notes rundown. Be quick to get off Tinder. Once you've made a date, sort of like consider that book closed until it's time to check in to make sure that date is still going. Mm-hmm. Again, if people are, if she's messaging you, you. Yeah, don't ignore her. Yeah, there's no need to ignore her or like, like play it cool and be like, I'm going to wait four hours and 42 <laughs> minutes before I respond to this so I don't seem too desperate. Fuck it. Like, if you're sitting at home doing nothing and she texts you something worth responding to, fucking respond to mm-hmm. it. But don't just don't check force in conversation. repeatedly. Just be like, hey, how's your great day going? Oh, yeah, we're cool. Me too. Mm-hmm. Like, that's... that's. But also, in general, nothing. you should never really, like, just try and force conversation. Yeah. It's the kind of thing where it's flowing or it isn't. But, yeah, I feel like when you're chatting on one of these apps, it's like you only really need to have, like, that one really good conversation or exchange yeah. before, like, you both have an idea. Because that's all it is, is you're talking to have an idea of whether or not... Like, it's like stages. You see them, you have their brief description, you swipe if you like them. If you like them, you meet and you chat. And if you like after that chat, then you meet them in real life. You don't want to have this like, oh, I've been chatting this girl for three weeks on Tinder. You're doing it wrong. Yeah. If that's the case. Yep. So maybe that's it. Also, I guess it depends on where you're inviting them out to. Because we don't know that, right? It's For me, I always went to the same place. Mm-hmm. No, um, but I'm saying like for this person, like they're saying a lot of people ghost or like he doesn't seem to be able to convert it into whatever. Like it could be like, hey, let's go to a movie. And they're like, nope. Or it could be yeah. like, hey, come over to my house. Yeah. And don't like, invite nope. people to your place. Don't invite, like, go somewhere that is conducive to conversation mm-hmm. the first time. And which safety. Is, which is a nice, like, just find a cool local bar. Yeah. Also, like, I went to a bar that was pretty much right by my house. And, that helps. And if it went well, then you I could be like, hey, away. do you want to, like, come back to my place for a drink? Yeah. Um, Have some cool drinks. Yeah. Like, and, and, like, if, if you know that... Uh, if maybe she's a little hesitant, like suggest meeting up in her neck of the woods or somewhere in between. Like, yeah, it doesn't matter, but be the one to suggest the place. If you're asking someone on a date, don't do the like, I don't know, where do you want to go? Do you, yeah. do you, you know what I mean? Like have a very clear plan of what you're going to do and be like, I know this great bar. It's here. Uh, do you want to meet up Friday, eight o'clock? Mm-hmm. And if they're like, oh, I'm not sure, maybe then be like, oh, well, how about somewhere near to you or... Yeah. You know, if they are, like, hemming and hawing, then you can be like, if you have a better suggestion, I'm down. But, yeah, I there's nothing worse than me. Like, hey, you want to meet up? And they're like, sure, what do you want to do? And you're like, I'm not sure, what about you? Yeah. And they're like, well, and you're like, well, what, I don't know, like, where's, ha-? like, suggest a place. And if they have problems with that, then you can move from there. But at least you're not, like, you know, just, hmm. Yeah, it's, it's best to have a plan going into it and then be ready to roll with the punches. Yeah, yeah. And again, as you said earlier, which you didn't get to expand on, I guess, is like, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Like, yeah. the whole point of Tinder is you, like, cast a wide net, you talk to a bunch of people, and, like, works out or it doesn't. But, like, don't be afraid to be talking to a few different people on there. Like, yeah, Tinder is literally, like, speed dating in your pocket. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean, like, you don't go to a speed dating thing and then, like... Sit at one table. So, yeah, you. I mean, like, some people do. It's, well, you Because you rotate around. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> 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 Fine, just follow Shirley around. Like, hey, Shirley, um, it's me from that table I was meant to stay at. Yeah, I mean, this now I'm at your table. Yeah, just yeah, like keep keep your options open and and don't com- like a lot. I think a lot of people will get hung up with trying to get laid so badly that they once they get like a little little hint of of attention that's you know they're full speed ahead on that one person. But like, don't like just. Be cool, be like a normal person, and and talk to people because you you don't have one chance. There's a bunch of options out there. Mm. And like enjoy yourself. Don't put on like a persona and like don't you know you'll note we're not saying say this or be this way necessarily. Yeah. Like be yourself and be like natural because if you're trying to act like somebody that you're not, it's probably not going to come off all that well. Yeah, you know if they're like oh yeah I'm like big into fashion, you're like yo me too. And they're like oh you know. Like, just yeah. don't be afraid to let what you're into shine, no matter what it is, because 
if they're like, no, that sucks, then you know you probably don't want to meet up with that person anyway. Because you're just going to be wasting yeah. your time and money. And like, what are they going to have to say this entire time? Like, you're going to have to just not talk about the things you like. So it's better if you find someone. And if you do have matching interests, the whole thing's going to go a lot fucking better, right? And I find a lot of people, especially like women on online dating, is they're so bombarded with <laughs> assholes that I think there's like this initial wall that you kind of have to break down before they're mm. willing to sort of like actually invest any time in you. And I found the best way to do that is, yeah, like you said, like be yourself. Like the amount of times I sent like jokes or like stupid gifts or something mm -hmm. that like most guys would be like, what are you doing? Because if they don't think I'm funny, mm -hmm. they're not going to think I'm funny in person. Exactly. And, and also like, like the if they're going to be all offended, like you sent a gif then you probably don't like yeah because unless they're literally just coming and jumping straight in your bed which itself will be kind of weird but like you're gonna have to go and sit down and then convince them in person so if you manage to finagle them into a date with you through like means that aren't necessarily yourself you're then gonna have to sit down and suffer through this mm -hmm. super shitty time where you're gonna have to pretend to be someone else again which is just gonna get progressively harder and worse and yeah. you're probably not gonna enjoy yourself and, like, trying to explain yourself, like, trying to backpedal is the weakest fucking position to be. Yeah. Like, so I'm saying this as a man, because um, I don't think women really have to do it that often. But, I mean, like, they might. Um, I just don't have any experience as mm. a woman online dating. Um, but, like, making a joke and then if she calls you out on it and then being like, well, well no, I didn't actually mean it. It's like, stand by it. Like, if it, yeah. if... If it's offensive and she's maybe like, maybe don't make it. Hey, like, yeah. Like if she's like, uh, maybe don't make rape jokes, like listen to her and mm -hmm. don't fucking make rape jokes. Yeah. Um, but like if you also, I don't think there is backpedaling from that other than just apologizing and changing your fucking ways. Yeah. I mean, like there are always people who are like, well, but I didn't actually mm, mean, you yeah. know what I mean? Um, but yeah, like if you make a stupid fucking reference to something and she's like, oh, you're into, you know, firefly. Oh yeah. Like, yeah, I am. You know what I mean? And like to misbehave. And again, if if that's like a big turnoff for her, then fuck it. Yeah, you've done yourself a favor and you just move on to somebody better. Because like there's not like there's no chance that you're going on there and people aren't into what you're into. Like literally, no matter what the fuck it is. Like, yeah. My one of the best dates I ever had on Tinder was a girl who cosplayed oh, sorry, not cosplayed, LARPed as a hobbit. It was great. A mean girl's hobbit. It was awesome. I and like I'm not that into Mean Girls or LARPing, although I bet it'd be fucking fun That'd as hell. Be so much fun! But like, it was so cool to hear someone talk about something they were like passionate about, and like, then you get to be like, "Oh, what's this like? How did this go down?" Like, and you get to learn more about it. Whereas if she was just like, "Yeah, I, I like Top Forty and Netflix," I'd be yeah. like, "Me too." Yeah, I guess everyone does. Yeah, to, that's why they to, exist. Exactly. So like, you know, let what's you come out. One of like, my favorite Tinder dates. Very similar to yours was mm -hmm. someone living a like sort of a double life kind of thing. Um, her only picture on Tinder was her in like this ridiculous ba like banana costume. Um, and when I met up with her at the bar, she was wearing a place. She wore the banana costume. No, she didn't. She did. How I never fucking heard about this. Um, I was talking about it. I was talking. About, what was I talking about? Someone showed me a picture of them in a banana costume. I was like, I fucking forgot about. This. Did you ever take it off her? Uh, no, she was, like, actually very strange. Yeah, obviously, she showed up in a fucking <laughs> banana costume. Um, I found out... She's either literally the funniest person in the world, but also a massive weirdo, or just the weirdest yeah, person Yeah, no, I found out... I went to that bar, like, again, um, mm -hmm. and I was talking to the bartender. I was like, yeah, I came here once and, like, met up with a girl who was in a banana costume. Let me guess, she's she like, wasn't very appealing. Because he peeled bananas, Dan. Yep. Uh, <laughs> um, and the bartender was like, oh, yeah, she uh, she used to live upstairs and we do that all the time. And that was just like her fucking move. Was it like, what was the angle? I don't know. Maybe it was like an art thing. Did she or just, like a, it was, you know, or it's a vice article like somewhere. A hundred percent. I like, went on 20 dates as a banana and yeah. you'll never guess what happened. <laughs> um, if If this is you, fill us in. What happened? Yeah. Did I, you ever have sex while still wearing the costume? Did you ever penetrate someone with your banana? I don't know. I I, I wish. Did she? <laughs> you wish? Ooh. I wish I, like, get the whole picture. Yeah. But I was happy to be a part of it. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Next question? Yeah, okay. Um. So another friend of the show. Um. Again, we're going to agent this up. Agent Paisley. Ooh. 
Um, and she says, so if you have a friend who you get on ridiculously well with, better than you do at most, and you really enjoy spending time with them, enjoy their company they are, and you know they like you, do you give it a shot even if you're not attracted to them? Mm, what you say? I don't <laughs> think so. Yeah, you don't. Uh, Short answer, you don't. Long answer, it's really good that you want that in a relationship because that's what you should aim for. Um, like, if you don't have that same, like, connection and, like, you really like them and you're, like, Do they say how long they've known each other? No. So here's the thing. I've definitely met people who I've grown increasingly more attracted to yeah. the longer I knew them. Like, there are people who, you know, who I met in college and I was like, you know, I thought they were sweet. Yeah. Um, and then by, like, the end of my program, I was like... God damn. You, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, like I was far more attracted to them. Mm-hmm. Well, like, um, that's the thing. Like, attraction... I had a girlfriend at the time, so obviously it's like, it was it was a different kind of thing, but it was like, I under, like, their sexiness kind of revealed itself yeah. through their personality and through the time I spent with mm-hmm. them. And that's the thing. Like, people, you can see people who are super hot and then start talking to them and you're just like, no, I would never in my life because they just suck. Yeah. You know, or you can, like, meet people and initially, like, they just fly under the radar a little bit. And then, like, three weeks later, you're like, God damn, that's one of the sexiest people I've ever met. So, yeah, but I think the point still stands. Like, you don't get with them and then hope that that happens. Yeah, no, you... If it does happen, You then don't hope... Yeah, if it happens... No if it happens naturally over time, mm-hmm. and then you're like, hmm, okay. And you know what I mean? And it's probably going to happen, like, just one day. There's going to be a, a switch that flips. Yeah. Um, it'll be like, I don't know you guys will be camping and he'll be fucking like chopping some wood or something. You know what I mean? And like, it'll, it'll just be like one of those like well, triggers. Well, Dane's dream journal is about. Um, everyone is chopping wood. <laughs> wood everywhere. Just flying off wood. Everywhere. Wood off wood off wood. Yeah, like there'll, there'll be a moment or like, you know, he'll say something in your defense or there'll, there'll be There's, a moment yeah. in which like everything will like, change. Or you'll see somebody chatting to a girl and you'll be like, oh shit, wait a minute, why am I jealous of that? Or something, you know? Well... I think that which could be something else, yeah, but you know could, what I mean. Yeah, right? there there is that that moment, but yeah. So sure. I guess it's possible that it might develop, but I think until you have that, there's no point putting yourself in that position because yeah, it's gonna suck for everybody unless everything changes because they like you, so they're gonna be upset if you're like I like you because they're gonna get really happy and then you're like oh sorry never mind like yeah and you either especially do it- when the reason that like you're gonna have to call it off it's like. I just, I'm just not attracted to you. Yeah. Like, that's a hard that's, burn. That's pretty shit. And I do get the impression that they know each other at least decently well. I don't think it's, like, a new thing. Yeah. You know? Um, I would say months at lowest. But, again, that's just me assuming because yeah. I didn't actually clarify. It, uh, it would be... Yeah. I mean, you're also whacking a fine line. Like, if you know he's into you, mm-hmm. it's it's really hard not to, like lean into that yeah you know what i mean like play into like that validation yeah because no one's gonna be mad about someone liking the fuck out of you that's, yeah it's always you know i like i find myself kind of guilty of that every now and then we're like if i find out like someone at work kind of has a crush on me mm-hmm. i'll like i don't know like i'll relish in that a little bit yeah well like, um, you're never not going to be like yeah someone finds me sexy yeah it's just like you have to f- make sure that like you're not your just like using them your for appreciation, that, like, it, yeah, isn't uh, is it the sole reason why you're keeping them around? Yeah, yeah, and also like not to lead them on. If, yeah, you know, like if they ever do kind of broach the subject, you kind of have to be very clear. Yeah, um, and a lot of like leading people on is a really tricky yeah situation because, now because there's I mean it's always been but like we're now a little more aware of it because um, you might not necessarily like. You could be leading someone on just by existing. You know what I mean? Depending thing, on how like they take everything. The whole so idea like, of like this friend zone sort of thing. That bullshit. Yeah. So that's why like I, I'm hesitant to say something like that. But at the same time, there are clear ways that you can. Such as if he does bring up that he likes you and you kind of like slide away from saying yeah. that you don't. You know what I mean? Like if you're just kind of constantly just like, you know brushing it aside but not really addressing it like yeah. oh that's so sweet yeah and then like just like not sort of I, not saying sorry putting your side of things yeah <laughs> yeah I would uh, I would err on the side of caution I would sort of reevaluate your relationship to make sure that you're you're in it for the right reasons yeah you're keeping it 
on the level um, and then be ready to have that that chat mm-hmm. in case it comes up and, and be ready to be honest about it. Yeah. And if like things do change and you do start to become attracted to this person, don't be afraid to give it a shot if you want to. Yeah. But I do feel like both those things have to be there. Like in any situation. Yeah, because even if it's like one of those things where you guys are like, you know, out and drinking and like, and then, you know, that, that little voice in your back and be like, what's it like? Mm-hmm. What would it be like? Yeah. Um, you really got to keep that voice zipped up because it's going to mean way more to him than it will to you yeah. if it doesn't work out for you. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like if you, if. If that night doesn't blow your mind and change your whole perspective... Mm -hmm. Which, like, it probably won't. probably won't. um, You've opened a floodgate for him. Yeah, and you'll probably never be able to be friends again. Yeah. At least not the same kinds of friends. No. He's he's going to be be very hurt. Yeah, it'll be irreplaceably or irreversibly damaged. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you just, I guess, be careful. Be so careful. Ready for a quick one? Always. This is from Reddit user... Kibble, uh, kibble. What? Um, Kidbubble? It's like kibble, but one of the B's is a V. That's great. And he says, "How do I not be scared of getting my dick snapped in half when my girlfriend is riding it?" Ooh. Let's try to keep this one brief. I don't know. <laughs> uh, so here's the thing. I would say you hold um, them in place and you thrust up. Exactly. You you take charge until you're more comfortable with it. Um, so it's like, just cause you're on the bottom doesn't mean you don't have to do work. Oh yeah. Um, I would say, yeah, get her on top, um, get her legs really close to your sides and have her lean down. Um, and then you just sort of like wrap your arms around the waist or grab her ass, grab her and, ass and, just and you just go to town. Arch your hips and fucking go to pound town. Yeah. Um, keep your, keep your knees bent too. That'll give you a little bit more stability. Mm-hmm. And like, you need to be able to like hold on to them, keep them in place for your own kind of like positioning as well as optimal not snapping your dick um also like some girls go fucking wild on it and like sometimes Mm. you just might have to like tell them like relax like i've had girls like (laughs) what was the term from before uh the squirm protocol no the other one it's like fuck so wild she fucks so wild yeah Yeah. some girls just fuck so wild um but also yeah maybe initiate anti like some girls get in like squat position and just like Jump. Just, yeah. yeah and like, then they bounce on the bed and they're like... And to be fair, sometimes it's great. Hey, when you can do it, you can do it. Yeah. But I'm assuming this person cannot. But oh, I'm, I guess maybe not. Maybe I've they're never just... not been terrified. Like, even when I've enjoyed it, I've been like... Yeah. Because it's it a matter take, like, of... If you, if you, you know, a one inch too high... Not even, depending on yeah. wetness, right? They get so wet that, like, that inch becomes a half inch now that you're just going to fly out of there. Yeah. Right? And then, like, if she's coming down with all of her force, that's... Um, so, I mean, like, consider that an expert maneuver and work your way up to it. Yeah, I definitely would, like, get them on top and then you kind of take the reins. And, like, yeah. uh, that's usually and then fucking tra- great for them anyway. And so, tra- yeah, transition from, like, you to, like, and then be like, okay, you can you can help out. Yeah. But always keep your knees up because at least, like, she's got something to bounce into. Mm-hmm. Uh, if that makes sense. Like, her, her ass will be hitting your thighs. And that, that'll reduce a little bit of the... The directions in which you yeah. go. Well, I feel like, so a good way to start is, like, sitting. So, like, you sit down, have her sit on top, and, like, just reach your arms around her, and then just whisper in her ear, don't snap it. Yeah. And that's the only way to do it, really. Break it and I'll break you. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> don't threaten that was... anyone yeah. that's letting your dick inside of them. Or... In general. Yeah, or in general, I guess. If your dick isn't in someone right now, threaten them. Threaten them. Only sure. only stop threatening people when your dick is in them. Yeah, if you're oh, on a no. bus. You know, there's some threat. fucking asshole listening. He's like, yep. Dan. Fuck you. He's just writing notes. Mm-hmm. He's like, I knew these boys would come around. <laughs> Finally. Maybe it is like slow brainwashing. All his bullshit just piles up. Like when you, I don't know, calcify your... His Twitter feed is like the Manchurian candidate, like activation code and he's just slowly turning us all into pieces of shit <laughs> alright let's hit another one alright are you ready for something appalling yeah is it time for Dan already no uh, so this is uh, from reddit this is from user quiet z86 and she asks how do I tell my boyfriend to clean his butt <laughs> uh, I've showered with him he does not use a washcloth 
He soaps up his body and uses his hand to splash a little water between his crack. I'm most positive he doesn't reach the butthole. He has washed the same exact way after pooping. One time I tried ramming and got a crappy surprise. I could feel the flakes on my tongue. I was so offended. My mouth smelled and tasted horrible. I never did that again. Last month after spending the night, I noticed a tiny poop stain on the sheets. Freaking out, I thought it was me. I checked and I was dry and clean, so I knew it was him. 99% it wasn't me. 99? <laughs> because that 1%. when I clean my behind, I get up in there with a washcloth and two different soaps. Whoa. I pull my cheeks apart. I squat and I smell the washcloth to make sure it doesn't smell whatever it takes. <laughs> a few months ago, I was talking to him on the phone. And in a surprising tone, he told me that he did not clean his butt good enough. Last night, I came home from visiting him. And out of curiosity, I smelled the back of my pants. And they smelled like butt. I don't know if it was from his chair or from the bus I rode on. Okay, it, this... It's abnormal to me that he just splashes water on his behind. If you poop and dumped wipe with a cloth, I'm sure the poop just doesn't disappear. I'm upset, disturbed, and just want him to use a washcloth. So is she saying, like, you gotta shower every time you take a shit? I, d- I think she might have said he showered instead of doing anything else after taking a shit. Oh, that's fucked. And he just, like, did that little non-butthole <laughs> achieving splash. <laughs> I mean, this whole thing is upsetting. Why is she One, smelling her own pants yeah, and washcloth? Like, I'm sorry. There's, I can't imagine any butt situation that would make your jeans smell like butt unless it's coming from your own butt. It... <laughs> You know I, mean? I feel like, like this girl has butt, butt paranoia. Is, yeah. Like, she's like, is it his chair? Is it the bus? Something smells like butt on the back of my jeans, but it's not my ass. Mm. Yeah, there's a... Occam's razor. Fixation here. The nearest butt. Probably is the source Maybe. Of I mean, to be fair. If Maybe when she was in bed, he got up, wore her jeans, just did a few squats, did a few lunges, and all of a sudden she got fucking poopy butt jeans, and maybe he was using that as a like, well, check your jeans. Do they smell like butt? I... <laughs> There's so much to wrap my head around here. Firstly, if you're going to fucking rim or, like, do any anal play and you don't clean yourself or your partner, if you don't fucking prep that, you're an idiot. And you can't be upset when there's poop. Yeah. I or mean, any really kind of like, unhappiness. Like, these things, if you they just take bust that out. Yeah, if you're just like, be like, we had curries, so let's go to town in an hour. No. You know what she needs to do? She needs to buy him a fucking loofah. You know what a loofah is? Yeah. She needs to get him one of those bad boys. Yeah, but, like, I'm sure he has cloths. It doesn't matter. There's, it's, I've never used a washcloth to, like, clean It's kind of grotty, but... It's very strange. Yeah. I mean, like, like I don't know why the loop is any better, but, like, you do it. Like, oh, no. you get up in there. and But, like, in a sexy way, you know what I mean? Like, spend some time, like... Well, she tried to do that with her tongue. <sighs> <sighs> I, I hate this question. I know you would. Just fucking soap. Well, you just soap well, him up with the loofah, like his whole body. Well, just like get in the just shower. Tell him. You light just some, say, light some fucking candles. You just say, hey, like there were poop on the sheets the other day, and also when I but rimmed you, weird. I got shit in my mouth. Uh, clean your butt. That's it. That's how you ask. You say, hey, you shat on the sheets we slept in, and you also got shit on my mouth. <laughs> you shat in my mouth, boyfriend. Fucking clean your butt. That's how you say it. You just go, hey, boyfriend. <laughs> Clean your fucking butt. You shat in my mouth. I mean, to be fair, he didn't shit in her he mouth. He basically did. He sorry. He, he remnants. F- he butt flaked, he flaked on her he tongue. Flaked in her mouth. Um, no, you. That's how you ask. That's step one. Step one is not clean his butt for him. Maybe be like, it is. Here's though. how you do it, and then you go like, ur, 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 ur. okay. Think back when you were a kid. And I'm pretty sure. Sh- I hope no, to no, no, fuck no. this guy. Is not a kid. We're, we're She's like, not rimming a child. About, think about this: when your mom was like, "Clean up, do the dishes, take the garbage out," you were never like, "I'm going to do that right away." Like, I can't wait to do that. No, but I also didn't there's, like lick the garbage and then get upset that it tasted God, weird. There's no proof that you didn't. Mm. Um, here's the thing: Who have you been talking? So to? you get in the shower. You make a real sexy shower night. You get this, like, real good loofah, real good soap, maybe the two that you use on your butt. That's too... Is which that is too excessive. Many yeah, that's yeah. too many See, soaps. I think there's there's subtle hints that maybe she's, she, like, an, a butt... He might not be the cleanest, butt but, pervert. No, a butt, like, hypochondriac. Yeah. Because 
two soaps, whatever it takes. Yeah. And also the fact that like she's still only 99% sure and then she smells her own butt jeans. Yeah. It's weird. Okay, back to the shower. So, so but you've soaped everyone up. Um, like this. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Everyone. Everyone. How many Everyone. butts need to be cleaned? Anyone that she thinks needs a good butt cleaning is in the shower right now from everywhere in the world. By the sounds of it, it and is at least, at least multiple people you, and one bus seat. You get in close mm. and you soap up his back while you're sort of like using the soap to give him a hand job. While he's distracted with this hand job, that loofah is slowly scrubbing back on the back and then it's lower back and then it's in the butt crack. If he's into, if he's into like getting rimmed, He's all right with, like, butt stimulation. So here's the thing. If he's like, what are you doing? Just be like, oh, I'm just I'm just preparing you for rimming. I'm, I'm just cleaning you up. And then he gets a reward for having a clean butt, and that's having his butt licked. Butt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Is that other people who can hear us yelling about Probably. butts getting licked? Close the door. Um, just what you want people to come in while you're yelling yeah. about. I know. Perfect. My mother-in-law is here, and... Yep, and um, we're yelling about rimming and, and dirty and poop butts. Aggressively detailed how to <laughs> convince your boyfriend to clean his ass. You've just yelled a uh, sexy butt fondling situation to the boy you're in a closet with drinking whiskey. <laughs> yeah, boys. No, but the thing is, right? Now it's like one of those things where you feed a rat when the rat hits the button, and then the rat will hit the button all the time. Yeah. You've, no, but backwards. Because you've. Put him in a position where he gets sexy shower nights because he got that dirt butt. So now he's going to let the butt get extra dirty. No, no, no. Because no. now there's going to be another shower night. You don't need to shower night him if his butt is clean. But here's the thing. If he if he knows that if he has a clean butt, he gets that tongue. <laughs> he's going to keep his butt clean. But, but what if he prefers the actual cleaning more than the rimming, right? You got that contours on the loofah. Yeah. So he's going to get... Ec- even dirtier. So you have to use two loofahs and four soaps. You're going to have to cut his butt off. I'm talking about it. We got one more. Do it. Make it PG because... <laughs> nope. This comes from Reddit user Pene26. Do you guys still enjoy sex without having to come? My man and I go at it every day. If not, every other day. Uh, sometimes it takes him a long time. No complaints here. Or is not able to come. I worry that I'm not able to satisfy him. Every time I bring it up, he says he enjoys it regardless and to stop worrying. Is it normal for some guys? Or do you think he's just saying that? Uh, I will say that I have very occasionally had a situation like this where, like, in the middle of, like, whatever you're doing, like, you'll come during sex and then continue to do stuff with them because, like, you know they can go for at least one or two more. And then in the meantime, you'll get hard again. And, like, sometimes, cool, that's good to go. Mm-hmm. Round two, off the bat. But sometimes you know that, like, the amount of, like, whatever it's going to take to get yourself to come again after that short of a window is just next to impossible or not worth the effort. Or you know you can just leave it and come again in, like, an hour. So you'll have sex, or I have had sex then, just purely because I know they would enjoy it. And I know I'm not going to come. So once they do, we finish. And I'm totally cool with that because... I knew it wasn't going to happen anyway, and it's going to make them feel good. Fuck it. But it it seems like a different situation. But I assume it still stands, right? Yeah, I mean, I... If you enjoy your partner's pleasure, then... I went through a very, like, long phase where I had a really hard time coming. Mm. Um, And that was just because, like, I was so detached from everything. It was, like, kind of the height of my my singledom. Mm -hmm. Um, And kind of when I started to realize and, like, pulled the reins back. And, like, I I just could not finish. Not really. Um, with, I mean, there were there were a few select women that I could, mm-hmm. but like yeah. those, those are women that I had relationships with. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so it was like if I was just like sleeping with someone off Tinder or someone I met recently, um, it would be very challenging and rare that I would finish. But like, I still enjoyed the entire experience. Yeah. And that's the thing. I feel like if you care about someone else's pleasure, then like, it's cool. You know what I mean? Like. Once they're not the one, like, specifically denying you of it, unless that's also what you want to do, you know what I mean? I feel like the only time you're not going to enjoy it is if, like, there's, like, an external force. Like, if you want to come and someone's like, nope. Or if, like, you're frustrated and don't understand why you can't. But, like, 
you know, I feel like if you're doing something for yeah. somebody else's pleasure, like you should probably enjoy it. You know, yeah. I mean, sometimes like you're just tired, and sometimes you're yeah. hot and sweaty. Too and drunk. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes like it just doesn't happen. Yeah. And, like that's all right. Mm-hmm. It's the same way. It's like some guys gr- or sometimes girls just can't like get turned on. Like if if you're not in the mood for it, or if like you know, mm-hmm. if if, but if you still want to pleasure aligned, your partner, yeah, fuck it. like that's the thing. The the body is mind is willing, but the flesh is weak. Yeah. Um, if your mind is willing, then that makes fucking sense. Yeah, and like, trust trust your partners. If he says he's into it and he's mm-hmm. enjoying himself, then I feel like it's natural to feel guilty when you're getting pleasure and they're not necessarily, yeah. you know, getting the same. Especially with like decade, like. Well, I feel like anyone should feel that way. Um, and if you're not, then you're not doing it right. Well, I but, mean, you know, think of how many guys. I know that's why I'm saying they should. <laughs> yeah, feel that way. Anytime I've ever been like, yeah, I faked it. Girls have been like. Oh, huh? I know, right? And it's like it's like oh, it's, so many times. It's yeah, it's not that uncommon, and it's not that hard. Like if you're wearing a condom, like if you're not wearing a condom, it's it's a little bit. It's it's a little mm-hmm. trickier to pull off. Yeah. Um. Well, how can you pull it off? It's on. <laughs> but your dick doesn't come off. No, you said condom. If you're not wearing condom, it's hard to pull Wait, off. Wait, when people say getting it off, they don't mean ripping their dick off. No, they do. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's and that's like if you're waiting. For your dick to grow back so you can come, then that's makes sense that you'd want to fuck them with your torn off dick. And <laughs> oh boy, well, <laughs> I think it's time for a Dan. Oh god, um, I mean, oh my god, like I there's just so many. I I just like every time I look at these, I just like go down this spiraling cascade of shit that I'm just like baffled. Also, we should probably say our goodbyes and thank yous and deets. Yeah. Because we got some big news. Do we? Well, what are we now on? Oh, yeah. Um, we're we're on Stitcher now. So if you're a fan of the Stitcher platform, you can find us on uh, on there. On Stitcher. On Stitcher. Um, also, we, we might have like left this a little bit late, but uh, I know it's never too late to help. But basically on iTunes, one of the things they lend a lot of weight to are reviews and ratings. Mm-hmm. So if you haven't been able to get a chance to rate and review us, and you could, that would be superb. It would be an excellent birthday gift for me. Yeah, Dane's birthday's coming up, so uh, throw him it's some... It's already happened. It's already happened. In in the future, it's already happened. And when you're listening to this, it'll already have happened. Mm-hmm. So give him a little birthday present of your support and your love. Yeah. Uh, it takes like three seconds to pop over into iTunes and... Uh, give us five stars. Get us a five-star <laughs> review and, and maybe write a little review about us and, and if you enjoyed us and what you like about us. Yeah, that would be really great, really helpful. We're trying to like, you know, get new listeners, get a little bigger and like, you know, because we've had to... You know, we're, we're putting aside like a lot of time and effort and like paying for the platform and all this stuff. So we got to you know, keep... Keep it expanding, I guess. I don't know. And we want more questions. We do want more questions. We feel like there's some people who've been so good, and I'm sorry that I'm like harassing you for more questions, but you guys are the fucking best. If you have ever sent in a question, you are the best. Thank, Thank you. you. And if you have a question, uh, you can send it to us in a variety of ways. Um, you can hit us up on email, which is fbuddiespodcast at gmail.com. You can find us on Facebook at FCK Buddies Podcast. Uh, you can also hit us on Twitter, which is FCK underscore buddies. Thank you, Josh Eagle and the Harvest Cities for their song, Paper Stars. Yeah. That's my boy. I already fucked it up earlier on the episode on purpose, so I figured <laughs> I, I had to do it properly this time. I think Josh Eagle doesn't like me for doing this. Uh, he I mean, didn't I, respond I've, to my tweet. I've never... He liked it. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Oh, well, fucking retweet, Josh. What the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> Are your paper's finger, too? Are your finger's paper? Oh, God. Yep, I'm becoming exactly you. Why. I'm becoming you. Exactly why he hasn't retweeted. All right, back to Dan's bullshit. Uh, there's too many fucking examples of him being just a massive piece of shit for me to choose from. But uh, this is maybe one of the scariest ones yet. You ready? Mm, no, but... Dan says, my ex is the female version of me. Who is this Jesus. Who is she? I hate it. My name is Dave Miller. And I'm not all Spain. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> and we're your fuck buddies. We're your fuck buddies. I'm not Spain. <laughs> <laughs>